I'm going to show you probably the coolest thing I've ever done with a simple bash script. And you can easily copy this for yourself as well. So I've been trying to improve my workflow as much as possible and I find I often want to quickly test things out in Angular. So when this happens, I would usually either just Google an Angular stack blitz, which is quick, but outside of my usual workflow and editor, or I would use an existing local Angular app or create a new one, but that is either slow or inconsistent and doesn't have the exact setup I want. So first, let me show you what this script allows you to do, and then I'll show you how to do it. So let's say I am working on my current project or scrolling through Twitter or whatever, and I want to test something out in Angular. I can just pop open my terminal and run play Angular, and I'll instantly have a fresh Angular application to play around with. Now I'm not editing anything out here. This instantly launches as I'm not generating a new application. I'm using an existing application that I have set up with the dependencies already installed. But the cool thing is if I make some changes to this application, let's just say I add some uh, text to the app module file here. And I'm also just going to just create a new junk file here, test.component.ts. So what I'm gonna do now is just close this and I'm going to again run that play angular command. And when I run this, you're going to see that all the changes I just made are completely reset and wiped out. So this test.component.ts file no longer exists, so I can get rid of that. And the little comment we added to the app.module.ts file, that little test comment is also gone as well. But that isn't all. Often when I am putting together an example in an angular project, I want to share that. So what I can do in this case is within that project, I'll open up a terminal and I can just run the share alias. And this is a separate uh, bash alias I've created. So it's just gonna ask me for a name for the repo. So I'm just going to call this uh, angular video test. Then it's going to ask me if I'm sure that I want to share this publicly, I'm gonna say yes to that. And then the alias will instantly make a copy of whatever is currently in this project and store it on a separate folder on my computer under that name. It will then automatically create a git repo for that folder and push it to GitHub all automatically and almost instantly. So you can see whilst I've been explaining this, it has already finished, but I've taken this even further. I now get the option to create a stack blitz from this repo. So you can see I have this prompt. It says, do you also want to create a stack blitz? If I say no to this, it will just open the public GitHub repo that I can share. But if I say yes, it will instantly import the example into a stack blitz. And now anyone can easily run it or a play around with the code. So we can see that stack blitz automatically runs the Angular application and we can then easily share this with anybody. They can come in here and make their own changes and just play around with it. So that's all pretty cool, right? So now let's take a look at how to do it. So the first thing you're going to need to do is create a base application you want to use. So I am storing my base applications in a folder on my computer called testing at forward slash dev forward slash testing. It doesn't matter where it is. You can have this wherever you like. So all you need to do is create the application normally, for example, by using ng new or Ionic start or MPX create NX workspace. As long as the resulting project is a Git repo, this method will work. So you can see here, I have my Angular base template, which is what we just used, but I also have one for Ionic, NX, NX Angular, NX Ionic, NX Nest. And I could add as many of these as I want. And you can also modify the base template if you want. So for example, maybe you don't just want the default Angular starter. Maybe you want one with a few routes set up, or maybe you want to have some state management library already installed. So when you're creating the application in here, you just need to make sure you commit any changes you want to stick around to the main branch. And then when you run the play angular command, it will always default back to that. So the next step is to create some aliases in your bash or zish config. So if you're not sure how to do that, I'll link to some additional resources on setting up aliases. So I'm using zish, so I'll open my zish RC file and I'm just going to search for my play angular alias and you can see here what this alias is doing so i have multiple ones set up here but let's focus on the play angular alias and so what this does is it first changes the directory to where that base template was that we just created after that it is going to run the reset and open alias which we'll look at in a moment and then finally it is going to serve the application with ng serve so let's take a look at what that reset and open alias does 
And this one's actually set up as a function because it's a bit more complicated, but it's the same basic thing. It's just an alias that can be called. And what this is doing, it is going to switch back to the main branch and discard any changes. So if we had just previously uh, been editing our template, we'd been you know, working on some example for something. If we had changed branches and not saved something by committing it, it would just dump those changes, switch back to the main branch. It is going to run git reset and git clean to wipe out any changes, delete any files that were created last time. And then finally, it is going to open up the project in VS code. So it's going to do this every time we run the play angular command. Now, if you don't want your changes to be wiped out the next time you run the play angular alias, you can create a separate branch on the base template and commit your changes there. So as long as you commit the changes to the branch, they will stick around. And if you don't, they will be wiped out. So that way you will still get a clean slate the next time you run play angular, but you can get back to your old code if you want by switching to that branch. So that covers the basic playground functionality. Now let's look at how this share alias works. So as we saw before, I triggered this functionality just by running the share alias. I just typed share and this alias here is what is being triggered. So I just ran share, but I can also supply the name for that repo directly to the share command. So all this is doing is checking if that uh, parameter was supplied. If it was, it just goes straight to the create git repo alias with that name. Otherwise we just launch this prompt, which is going to ask us what we want to call the repo. Now, an important thing to note here is that this is how you do this in uh, Zish, but I think with bash, the uh, syntax for creating a prompt like this is a bit different. So if you are still using just bash and not uh, the Z shell, then you might need to look up how to write this prompt exactly. So in either case, we end up going to this create git repo alias here. And once again, we launch another prompt. We use the dash Q flag here just because this is one of those uh, prompts where we want to just accept a single character. We just want to uh, accept a Y essentially. It's a sort of a yes, no prompt. And this is just asking us if we want to share this publicly. This is an addition I made after I got a little bit scared that I would accidentally uh, upload some NDA covered client code to GitHub in a public repo, which would not be ideal at all. So that's just a little check. And then if we say yes to that, that's when we get into all of this good stuff. So first I'm saving a reference to the directory where this was triggered because we want to come back to that afterwards. I'm using rsync to copy everything from the base template that we're working in, wherever we've made our changes. I'm copying all of that except the git folder and the node modules folder. And then I'm copying this into a directory on my computer. Again, it doesn't matter where you want this, but this is just where all of your shared code is going to be copied. So for me, I've just got a folder inside of my playground folder called shared. And whatever name we supplied for our Git repo is the folder name that it's going to use in that folder. So next we change into that folder. Then we just create a Git repo. We run the Git init, Git add, Git commit commands. And then we are using the GitHub CLI to automatically create a Git repo with GitHub for us and push all the code up. So to use this GH command, you're going to need to have the GitHub CLI installed. But basically it's creating a repo using the name we supplied. It's public, we're pushing it up, setting the source to our current folder, and we're setting up the remote upstream as well. And then we have the stack blitz portion. Again, we launch another prompt asking if we want to create a stack blitz. If we say no to this, then we are just going to use the GitHub CLI to open the repo in our browser. But if we say yes, we are going to open stack blitz and if we just open this URL in this format, all we need to do is supply stackblitz.com forward slash github forward slash whatever your username for GitHub is, and then the name of the repo that we just created. And that's going to cause Stackblitz to automatically import that GitHub repo into Stackblitz and run the project. So there really isn't anything fancy going on here. All you need to do is basically just open Stackblitz. And then the last thing we do is just change the directory back to the original path where we ran it from. So the last thing I want to show you is how to maintain this. So we have all of our base templates here, but let's say the next version of Angular or whatever comes out and you want your base application to reflect that. So you don't need to bother with upgrading everything manually. 
Uh, assuming there isn't anything you want to port over to the new version, you can just delete the existing Angular application or maybe if you had some code and branches in there you wanted to uh, save, you could move the Angular template to another folder somewhere. And then you can just run the ng new command again and create a new base template called Angular. And you're going to have whatever the latest Angular uh, versions are. But if you've added a significant amount of your own sort of starter stuff to the base template, maybe you've set up a bunch of routes and pages and state management or something that you want to use for every single time you play around with it, then you might not just want to delete and recreate the app. Uh, in that case, you could just update the existing base template as you usually would a normal Angular application. You can just update the dependencies manually. And then all you need to do is commit those changes to the main branch and they are going to stick around forever. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, if you want to do this yourself, I've got a link to the source code in the description. And if you got something out of this video, I would not at all be offended to receive a like or subscribe from you. And I hope to see you in the next video.